happy Thursday, Scott people. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Thursday's Midday Breakthrough Session with Apostle Karen Proctor. Thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. If this is your first time, I want you to go ahead and put a number one in there at any time. If this message blesses you or resonate with you, go ahead and put those hearts, those thumbs up. That lets me know that you are with me. Come on. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask you to please take this time and to share the broadcast out with your friends so that we can reach the masses for God. We know that sharing is caring. So go ahead and take the time to share it out with your friends. So I welcome you to sow into the ministry. If you, if the Lord place it in your heart, you can look at the top of the message where the topic is. You will see the links there that you can sow into the ministry and your sowing help to off uh, set the cost of doing ministry. So God bless you. Once again, I am your host, uh, Apostle Karen Proctor of Thursday's Midday Breakthrough Hour, and our message today is Bless Me Indeed. So you can go ahead and hashtag that uh, for me. I do appreciate it. Uh, bless Me Indeed. How many want the Lord to, to bless them in such a incredible way bless me indeed let me take the time to try to share the broadcast out i won't be long i promise you i'm going to try to do this in under 15 seconds and i hope that you guys have been having a amazing day so far um if you haven't i, I just speak it to your life that you will have an incredible day incredible day in God and go ahead and share the broadcast don't be afraid share 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 let's get it uh share it out we want the numbers to go up we want the word of the Lord to go to as many people as possible I wish it was a way that I can just share it out all at once and I don't have to click on name 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 but you know that's the way it's done so I'm going to do it. God bless you guys once again. And we're going to be talking about the blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord. Amen. So I shared it out um, to a few people. So let me go on with this message. God bless you. Um want to open with prayer. Father, we thank you that you allow us to come before your presence in the name of Jesus, the wonderful name of Jesus, Lord God. We decrease that your Holy Spirit would increase, God. We pray, Father God, that you will bless the technology, bless my lips, God. We pray that you will open up the hearts and the minds of the people to receive what you want them to receive in this hour. Father, we just thank you for your amazing love. Your love is so amazing till it never, ever cease. Hallelujah to amaze us. We just thank you for the incredible things that you have done and that you are still yet doing in the life of your people. Father, we thank you. And so again, the message, uh, bless me indeed. I want to read for you Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. Some of you probably came to the broadcast with your Bibles and some of you probably will go and get your Bibles later or just write these scriptures down so that you know what I'm saying is taken from the Holy Word of God. So Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22, it says, the blessings of the Lord, it make it rich and add it no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. So in essence, what is the word saying? Every time a blessings come from God, it make you rich and not all the time financially rich, but rich in your spirit, rich in your soul, uh, rich with peace, rich with grace, rich with mercy. And there sometimes it does add a financial blessing there. So, in other words, when God do something, it's not hard. It's not, 
a struggle. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. When God bless you, it adds no sorrow. It added no sorrow. So I just want to share this with you because it's something that the Lord just really have been dealing with me on even all through last week and even up until yesterday and up until this very moment, the blessings, the blessings of the Lord. And some people believe that this is something that we should not talk about, that we should be satisfied with the status quo. But I want to let you know today that the status quo ain't going to get you where you need to go. And so hence the Bible talk a lot about the blessings of the Lord. This is not somebody that's been uh, money hungry, greedy for things, greedy for substance. But I tell you when the hand of the Lord is upon your life, it makes your living just a little bit more easy. Can I get some thumbs up or hearts that lets me know that you are with me? Go ahead and share this broadcast. I know that God wants this word to be a blessing to as many people as possible. And what kind of blessings are we talking about? When God speak of blessings, when the word of God speak of blessings, it is simply a uh, supernatural favor, supernatural favor. Uh-huh. It's supernatural favor. Supernatural favor is what God is speaking of, the blessings of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I need the blessings of the Lord upon my life because of what God has called me to. It's so much bigger than what I can do off my own. What God has called me to, and maybe what God has called you to alone, but right now I'm talking personal. Come on. Hallelujah. So I begin to seek God for his word. You know, the Bible said the word of the Lord uh, it don't return unto him void. He say it would do whatever he promised it to do. And so as I begin to think about the things that the Lord require of me, knowing that I cannot do this on my own, knowing that I need help. Come on, somebody. Help is not a bad word. And so what I really need, what I really was seeking God for is his supernatural favor upon my life. Come on, because it, it's just not all about money sometimes. Don't you know that God can connect you with people to give you resources, to take you to another level, to connect you with somebody, to show you things that you don't know, to unravel uh, mysteries for you. Come on. And so that night I just began to ponder the word of God and I began to talk to God and say, well, God, if you require this of me, if you require that of me, then that means that you have to favor me. You have to bless me. Now understand, I know that I'm blessed because nobody can live the way that I'm living. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for the hand of God upon my life. Come on. I probably, like I said last week, I probably would have been homeless by now. Come on. I probably would have been hungry by now. I probably would have been naked by now. So I do know that God favored me. But what my soul was talking about is walking in a certain dimension of of favor, walking in a certain dimension of favor, that type of favor where you know God has did it and you know nobody else can say if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have been there. You couldn't have did this. You wouldn't have accomplished that. I need that kind of favor that my degrees can't give me. I need that kind of favor that my education can't give me. Come on, somebody. I, I need that kind of favor that my experience can give me. I needed that I know that God has to do this thing. I don't want you to go nowhere. I want you to stay right where you are. I want you to go ahead and share, 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 because I know that God is speaking to someone. And you know, just before I came on here, uh, the Lord reminded me of a word he gave me on April 4th. If you will go back and watch the videos from April 4th, I had some problems with my phone. So the videos is did in two parts, uh, part number two, uh, where the Lord spoke to me prophetically.
prophetically and say May is going to be a month of uh, breakthrough, supernatural dimensions. Uh, God is even raising up somebody to be a millionaire in this very same month. Come on. God reminded me of this month. This is a month of incredible supernatural breakthrough. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The favor of the Lord. Bless me indeed. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless me indeed. Glory be to God. God wants to bless you, increase you uh, beyond measure. And it has nothing to do with your background, your lineage, where you came from. Come on. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with your name. It has nothing to do with your age. It has nothing to do with with your uh your like i just said your your education glory be to god and, and and uh if the enemy is listening glory be to god i want you to take this and i want you to put it in your pipe and smoke it because god say this is the month hallelujah that he's going to show up and he's going to show out for his people and it's nothing that the enemy of the lord will be able to do about it like i said hallelujah it has nothing to do with your lineage in it, your name, your age, your ethnicity. Come on. Hallelujah. If we look at Hannah, Hannah was a barren woman. Uh, her husband had another wife and that wife was just pushing out babies, pushing out babies. But Hannah was favored of the Lord. When Hannah began to pray, hallelujah, don't you know God heard her and God blessed her? God blessed her. Her first child was a prophet. Prophet Samuel unto the nation. And after that, Hannah began to uh push baby forward. And God want to take you out of your barren season. Come on. I don't know where lied the barrenness in your life. Hannah was barren when it came to childbearing. But I don't know where the barrenness lie in your life. But if you would just believe God, I believe that God wants to break that barren spirit off of you. Look at Moses. When God gave him that big assignment and that assignment was so big for Moses and Moses Moses' eyes, but come on, we know that there is absolutely nothing too hard for God to do. And because Moses thought it was too big, I'm not going to get all into this story because I believe last month, month before last, I talked about the glory. Come on, you can go back and watch the replay. But Moses said, God, if you want me to do this, you got to show me your glory. Somebody out there may have a big assignment, a big vision, something big and incredible, and you feel Feel like you can't do it alone. Be like Moses. Moses say, God, show me your glory. And we know that the glory of the Lord is simply his blessing, supernatural favor. God, give me supernatural favor to get this done. And then there go Elijah. Come on. We know that Elijah was blessed of the Lord. He was so blessed there. Whatever this prophet spoke, it came to pass. Elijah say, Lord, let there be not no rain in the space of three and a half years. And just like Elijah spoke it, no rain came. So, so do you want the Lord to bless your mouth like that? That whatever you speak shall come to pass. Now here's the thing. I want you to remember that death in life is in the power of the tongue. So when God anoint your mouth, you got to be careful of the very things that you speak because guess what? It will come to pass. So I talked about Elijah, Moses, and Hannah, just a few of them to show you that the blessings of the Lord uh, come in many different type of ways. And so God wants you to ask for what you want. Yes, that's right. Ask for what you want. It is Jesus' word. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11, what do he say? He say, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks it, receive it. And him that seek it shall find. The door shall come open unto him. He say, or what man is there of you? 
whom if his son asked bread, he would give him a stone. Come on. If your natural father, if you went to your natural father and you asked him for bread, he loved you so much, he's not going to give you stone. I know my dad did and everything I asked him for, he gave it to me. Come on, somebody. And so Jesus said, if your natural father know how to do that, he said, or if you ask a fish, will you give him a serpent? He said, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So guess what? Even though to me, my natural father was a good father unto me. It's nothing that I wanted or needed, even as a grown woman with a job. If I just said it, my dad always tried to make it happen. But he say, if your natural father know how to good, give good gift, and yet he's an evil man, evil sin is in his heart. He say, what about your heavenly father? What about your heavenly father? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so today we want to uh, just ask God to bless us according to his will. Not our will, but ask God to bless you. Hallelujah. According to his will. Because Matthew chapter 6, come on somebody, in verse 10 say, Let thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And so as long as the word of God line up, as long as you, what you're asking, hallelujah, lines up with the will of God, the next two, the power of agreement, what you are asking lines up with the will of God. That's the power of agreement and agreeing from heaven to earth. Come on. God say he will do it for you. Glory be to God. God sent me here to break some mindsets off of people because sometimes we think that we got to have it all together. Hallelujah. And then some people say, glory be to God. You got to do this, that, that, and the other. But God said, hallelujah. I just read from the book of Matthew 7 and it's in red. And every time you see the right in red, it is known that Jesus is the one that is speaking this. Amen. He say, ask for what you want. Even this Matthew 6, come on, let thy will be done on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like you're asking in faith. You know, they have a, a church affiliation out there that some people say they call it not some people the word of faith and some people can't handle that some people cannot handle it and they say that's all they do is speak this that and that and blessings and, and riches but come on come on oh, I don't think that my father in heaven want us to be uh, poor come on hallelujah he was poor so that we can become rich amen and that's rich in all things that's the blessings in all things. God want us to walk in the blessings. He want us to walk in levels of favor. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you speak God's word and you believe it in your heart and it lines up what you are saying, lines up what with the will of God for you, glory be to God, he will make it happen. I don't know about you, but my days of being broke, busted, and disgusted are over. I told God last week, it is time for me to walk in favor, not just a measure of favor, not just a hit and miss favor. I mean that when I I go. Favor has gone before me. Favor is walking in the back of me. Favor is walking on the side of me because the task that God has given me is too much for me to be broke, busted, and disgusted, and don't know how I'm going to do it. Some people say, oh, when we get to heaven, glory be to God, but I want to tell you, me, I don't know about you, but me getting to heaven is another level. He said, let his will be done right here on earth. Come on, somebody. Somebody. And I believe God's word. Whatever the word of God say, I believe it. Yesterday, I was so sick. Last week, I was feeling sick. And yesterday, that thing just broke down on me last night. In the week, I was up the morning. And even in the morning, I woke up. My headache was so bad. My eye was throbbing. I, I, I hate to sound 
gross, but I throw it up over everywhere. I begin to put my hand on my head and I say, God, I believe your word. I don't just quote this for nothing. Your word say by Jesus stripes, I am healed. So I command whatever sickness is, this is to go out my body. And see, just understand, I don't believe just healing. It's the blessings of God. I know that healing is one of the blessings, but it's not all the blessings. Come on. I am a king's daughter. Hallelujah. I am a king's daughter. And if you think that much of yourself, you need to say that you are a king's child. You are a child of the king. You are a child of the king. And when you are a child of the king, there are benefits that goes with it. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible says, hallelujah, that God will not withhold no good thing from those that walk upright. Psalms 84 and verse 11. Hallelujah. The beginning of that verse is say, for God is a sun and a shield. He give grace and glory. He will not withhold no good thing from those that walk up right before him. So guess what? I have to check myself. You check your own self. Come on. Are you walking up right before God? Hallelujah. It's best as you you know how. And if you check yourself and you know that you are walking up, hallelujah, right before God, he said that he will be a sun and a shield for you. He will be your grace and glory. There's no good thing that he will withhold from you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I read for you from the book of Proverbs. It said the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. You think God want us to go around moping, grumbling, whining, complaining, and yet we're preaching and teaching that we serve a good God. He's a mighty God. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. But your life is jacked up, messed up, wrecked up. You couldn't even put two pennies together and rub it if you want. That ain't the type of God I serve. He is a God of abundance. He is an amazing God. He is an incredible God. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right here. Hallelujah. And give this prophetic word. I just heard the Lord say that it's somebody you are watching right now and you have some business. Hallelujah. You got some papers that you are been looking over and you have been struggling. God say go. Hallelujah. You get those papers and you hold it up before the Lord. Hallelujah. You hold it up before the Lord. God is going to become a sun and a shield before you. He's going to become your grace and glory. Come on. He's going to become your exceeding glory. I prophesy as the oracles of God. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. I don't know about you but I'm fed up. Hallelujah. Nothing can get done until tell you tied up the way things are going. And when you get tied up the way that things are going, hallelujah, and then you can do something to bring forth a change, to manifest a change. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You know, Joshua said, hallelujah. Joshua says in Joshua chapter one and verse three, God promised Joshua, he say, every place that the ground of your feet tread upon, he say, you shall possess the land. He say, just as I was with Moses, so am I with you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's a transferring of blessings. Come on. Hallelujah. I begin to look at myself. Hallelujah. Just as God promised my leader, hallelujah, that she will have a school of ministry, that this will be done, that the people will the church will go to the nation. Hallelujah. Even though she's not here with us in the natural. Glory be to God. Those promises are still there. Come on. Just like God told Moses. He said every place that the ground that the sole of your feet tread upon. He said you shall possess the land. Hallelujah. When Moses couldn't do it. Hallelujah. He slapped that promise. Hallelujah. Over to Joshua. Come on somebody. And so I believe Believe today that the ground that the sole of my feet tread upon, that I will possess the land. Hallelujah. See, you got to believe for yourself. You got to believe for yourself that the ground that you tread upon, that you shall possess the land. 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I, I, I remember back in the 90s, I quit that job at DCF. I couldn't take it no more. It was too much of stress. I was going in early and leaving extra late. I wasn't being paid for the hours that I was putting in. My children were young at that time. They will call me and say, Mom, when you coming home? We hungry. Because guess what? It was I should have been home to cook for my children. But I was letting that job inundate me, trying to keep up with my steps. Till one day I made up in my mind, come on, hallelujah, I'm quitting this job. It's too much of stress for me. I'm too young for this. God, just like you gave me that job, I'll get another job. Did I have the finances stacked up in the bank? No, come on. Did I have somebody to help me? No, but I believe God. I stood on this same word. God the ground that the tread upon, the sole of my feet tread upon, I possess the land. I went out in my yard and I began to walk around my yard and I began to decree and declare the word of the Lord over my home, over my property. I say, God, you have given me this and you will not allow the bank to take it back. Come on, you will sell me money from some kind of way until I get my next job. Can I tell you that God gave me favor like that? God gave me the blessing like that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is just reminding me of this because somebody else, you may be out there going through the same thing. And so if God has did it for me, don't you know that God will do it for you. Come on. And, and, and today before I came on here, God told me that he is calling us to task. He is calling us to task. Meaning whatever he told us to do, it is time for us to get to get it. It is not time for us to draw back and strength up in our faith. Come on. Whatever God has told you to do, it's time for you to release the real. Come on. Release the real. Release the fishing Real. Hallelujah. God wanted you to let down your net because there's a big catch. Hallelujah. Some of us have been scared to let out our net on the other side. But God told me to tell you, hallelujah, he is calling us to task. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this is exactly what God told me. Why preach it? and not live it? Why confess it and not possess it? Why believe it and not receive it? Why sow into it and not receive a harvest from it? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is calling us to task. Hallelujah. Why plant it and not water it and ask for increase from it? Come on. Hallelujah. So if you have planted it and you have watered it, hallelujah, with your faith, Hallelujah. You could receive an increase from it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm passionate about the things of God. I'm passionate about the word of God. I thought about Jabez. Jabez asked God to bless him. Come on. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter four and verse 10. And Jabez called on God of Israel saying, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be upon me and that you will keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted his request. So what are you asking God to bless you for? In what area? What area are you asking God to bless you in? Come on. Jabez was a, was a farmer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He was a herdsman. Hallelujah. So can you imagine? Hallelujah. All the land that he had. When he looked out, he saw the land. But he said, you know what? God, I can do so much more if you would increase my territory. The very name of Jabez mean pain. We don't know why his mother uh, named him pain. Come on. Hallelujah. Maybe she went through pain in her childbirth. Maybe she went through pain in her uh, pregnancy. Maybe she had a pain because her husband died or maybe he didn't acknowledge her while she was pregnant the bible don't say but we don't know why she named him pain but like i said earlier if the blessings of the lord is not contingent upon your name your ethnicity it's not contingent upon your age j pass push past all of that he said in other words 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want to believe that he said, in other words, I don't care how this woman named me pain. Hallelujah. Back in the Bible, they would name kids like prophetically what they wanted their life to be. And Jabez did not agree with that. She, he said, I'm not going to live a life of pain. I am a son of, hallelujah, the fathers of Abraham, of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. He said, no, God, if you would just bless me. Hallelujah. If you would just enlarge my territory, if you would just increase me. Now, some of us, hallelujah, may have come from the other side of the track. Some of us probably came from broken families. Some of us probably did all kind of things before we came to God. And we're not looking at what we used to be or what we did before. God say, when you come to him, all things are passed away and you become a new creature in Christ. And so therefore you begin to take up, partake of the blessings of Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless me, God. Bless me indeed. Hallelujah. I said he was a herdsman. So maybe he wanted more land, more territory. I don't know what your business is. I don't know what your career is. That you need God to expand you. Hallelujah. You need God to increase you. Hallelujah. I'm in the people business. Hallelujah. I'm an apostle of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that means that I need souls to be one. I need a place of the house God's people. Glory be to God. God, I need, I need. So come on, God, you could do it. Come on. Hallelujah. My natural vocation is still in the people's business. Hallelujah. By trade, a Christian counselor and a life coach. Come on. So that is still the people business. God, I need you to expand. I need you to increase. You want me to counsel the people. You want me to coach the people. Well, God, I'm asking you to expand me, increase me, enlarge my territory. Come on. Hallelujah. So if I can decree and declare it over my life, hallelujah, you need to decree and declare it over your life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I told you on last week, the Lord showed me three number eights. Eight going across. Eight, eight, eight. Amen. Hallelujah. Triple new beginning. What are the three areas that you need God to bless you? What are the three areas that you need that new beginning that you've been fighting and fighting? You may be a stay home mom. Hallelujah. You may be coming overwhelmed with taking care of the kids, taking them to soccer practice, taking them to chili to practice, cleaning up the house, getting things done. Come on. Hallelujah. And you say, God, I need a release. I need you to bless me. I need you to increase me. Don't you know that God can do it? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you know that you can find favor in the sight of God? I don't care what your vocation may be. You may be in the medical field. Hallelujah. You may be working on your own. Hallelujah. Like I am. And you don't know where the clients are coming from. But you can say, God, increase me. God, bless me. God, do it for me. And like I told you, Hallelujah. For those of you that remember some things go over your head. Sometimes you remember and sometimes you don't. And this is why God let us record it. If you will go back and watch April 4th part 2 video, you will see God brought it back to my remembering today that he said this month hallelujah for the people of God. This is the month of breakthrough. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the month of blessing. This is the month of increase. Hallelujah. This is the month of beginning more than double for your trouble. I even heard the Lord say, hallelujah, when I went back, when he reminded me of that video, I had to go back and re-listen to it again. I heard the Lord say out of my mouth, even somebody is coming to millionaire status. That's just how much God wants to bless us indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to leave you with this. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I want to read it in your hearing. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I want to build your faith up. Amen. Hallelujah. To put yourself in that position that the favor of the Lord, hallelujah, will meet you at your front door. Hallelujah. The favor of the Lord will meet you wheresoever you go. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 says, and it shall come to pass and everything that the Lord just spoke to me. It shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice 
of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. He was talking to Israel then, but we are grafted in through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so I receive the promises and the blessings of Abraham. And if you are a child of God, you should receive the blessings and the promises of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's saying, all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of thy God, blessed shall thy be in the city, blessed shall thy be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thy when thy come in and blessed shall be when thy goeth out the Lord shall cause thy enemies to rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face they shall come out against thee in one way and flee before thee in seven ways the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee and thy storehouses and all that thy set at thy hand unto and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto him and has sworn unto thee if thou shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and all the people of the earth shall see thee and call the, the, the name of thy Lord God and thou shall not be afraid of thee, and thou shalt make thee plenteous in good, and the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give unto you. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to go back to verse 11 and say, the Lord shall make thee plenteous in thy good. So in other words, we shall not be living in lack. Amen. Because he say he shall make thee plenteous in good. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if you don't have it, somebody going to come and bring it to you. Somebody is going to provide it for you. Because why? This is the promises of God. He say it in the fruit of thy body. The fruit of thy body what is what? It's your children, even your children, children. I don't know about you, but I always confess God for generational blessings, that I'm blessed, my children blessed, my grandchildren blessed. And even if I have great grandchildren, come on somebody, I decree and declare the blessings of the Lord over my family, over my siblings, over my aunts, over my uncles, over my cousins. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. He said the fruit of thy body shall be blessed and the fruit of thy cattle come on and hallelujah I don't know how many people got cattle out here but we just want to say the work of thy hand the work of thy hand come on somebody I say I see sister Kiki here come on hallelujah a hairdresser he say even the fruit of thy cattle the fruit of thy hand whatever it is even if you're living in retirement, glory be to God, what you worked for in the past, it still should be working for you now, bringing you increase, bringing you residual income. Come on, because this is the promise of God. Hallelujah. He say, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy father. So wherever you go, wherever God has planted you, amen, you can be in the Caribbean. Hallelujah. I get Caribbean viewers. You can be in Africa. I got a lot of African viewers. You can be in any part of the USA. Hallelujah. No matter what continent you are in. In the book of Acts, God say he know on where he will put every man on the face of earth and what family they shall come to. Hallelujah. What family they shall be born in. So no matter where you go, the blessings of the Lord shall overtake you. The blessings of the Lord shall overshadow you. Let me tell you, last year, hallelujah, God told me to leave. Amen. Leave my city. And can I tell you the blessings of the Lord went with me. Went with me without a paycheck. Never missed a rent payment. Never missed a water bill payment. Never missed a light bill payment. Never was short of a bread. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. So wherever you dwell, God say he want to bless you. He want to increase you. Come on somebody say, well oh that's all they talk about is blessings, blessings, blessings. Well God showed and talk about 
about curses. Hallelujah. He said, if you are in him, he said he want to bless you. He even say in the book of Jeremiah, he said the children don't have an excuse to say, all oh, our teeth are set on fire because our fathers have sinned. He said they don't even have an excuse for that. Why? Because he know he was sending his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross. Hallelujah. To take our sin and shame away. Hallelujah. To take the curse so that we can have blessings, that we can walk in the blessings of the Lord. Glory be to God. You may not have it in your checking account, but baby, can I tell you, there's somebody out there with some property, hallelujah, that God can put you on their heart for them to transfer the deed unto you. You may not have the, the education, the skill for that job. Don't you know that somebody can give you favor? I remember the very last job I had. Not that I didn't have the skill. In fact, it was it was uh, down for me based on the, the work I used to do. Glory be to God and the girl uh, told me one of the panelists after I got the job, she we became friends on the job. She told me, she said, you know, Carrie, they really wanted to pick somebody else. She said, but I told them it's something about that lady. No, I want y'all to pick her. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't you know the favor of God can rest upon your life just like that? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That job fed me for eight years. Glory be to God. God can do it. Amen. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Jabez prayed this one little prayer. He didn't go into all that hum, drum, this, that, or the other. He prayed. He must be uh, prayed in faith and he believed. Glory be to God that what he prayed that God will do it for. That is the only time that you will hear the name Jabez written in the Bible. It's First Chronicles chapter 4 and 10. Hallelujah. Even though what the enemy meant for her, his mother named him pain, that he would live a life of pain just because she went through. And I break generational curses even now. Some of you just because your mother and father went through something or you're going to be just like your daddy because they're mad. Hallelujah. But I break that curse in the name of Jesus. You're going to be like your, your Abba father. Hallelujah. The only begotten Father in heaven. Hallelujah. He wants to increase you. He wants to lavish you with his love. He wants to open doors for you. Hallelujah. He wants to design a door just for you to get through. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Some people are saying, oh, they ain't teaching Jesus no more. Hallelujah, baby. This is Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Because I read you the words of Jesus. He said, whatever you want. Come on. He said, if you ask me. He said, if you seek and if you knock. In other words, you got to do the work. You got to ask. You got to seek. You got to knock and the door come open. Somebody not experiencing the favor of God because you just sitting there thinking that because I'm quoting it. It's going to come to pass. But you got the seek and you got the knock and God say, baby, that door will come open. And every hindering spirit, hallelujah, that's been trying to hinder the move of God upon your life. Hallelujah. I come into agreement with the word of God. He says, whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So I bind every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus. Every self-righteous spirit, every spirit that's not like God, I bind your powers and I send you back to the sender and I loose the favor of God. I loose open doors over the people of God. Hallelujah. I loose the wisdom of God. Father, you say whatever we ask for when we pray. In the book of James, he say, if any man lacketh wisdom, let him ask it of the Lord and the Lord will give it to him freely in full measure. And so God, if we don't have wisdom for the things that you are calling us into today, God, we pray that you will give us the wisdom that we need that we can go forward to live in the fullness of you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you that heaven is touching earth. That wherever we go, the doors of favor is opening over our life. The blessings of the Lord is opening over our life. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you that your word don't return unto you void. It go into the places in which you send it, and it does the things in which you please it to do. And so, Father, we just thank you for the blessings. We thank you right now, God, even as I lift my hands. Come on, lift your hands as a prophetic act. Hallelujah, like the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah, it's flowing now, flowing from the heavens now. Hallelujah, we decree and declare the blessings of the Lord over your mailbox, over your checking account. Hallelujah. We decree the favor of the Lord over your business. We decree the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 over your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we will be careful to give you all the honor. We be careful to give you all the glory. We be careful to give you all the praise. God, I thank you. I thank you for the word that you allowed me to release on April 4th. God, I thank you that that word is activated, activated. Oh, God, in the earth realm today. God, we thank you that this word is being activated now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to leave you with this. I read it before, but I just want to read it again. Hallelujah. God is calling us to task. Why preach it and not live it? Why confess it and not possess it? Why believe it and not receive it? Why sow into it and not receive a harvest from it? Why plant it and not water it and ask for an increase from it? Hallelujah. So, beloved, God bless you. If you have not shared the broadcast yet, I'm going to ask you to share the broadcast. I don't believe that this word is for five people, six people, seven or ten people. I believe that this is a word for the masses of people. There are some people that don't believe that they are worthy of a blessing. There are some people that have wrong theology. Oh, don't ask God for that. Just be uh, thankful for the status quo. No, no, no. We're not going to be thankful for the status quo. Not when we are the king's children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are so many blessings that have been stored up, so many areas in which God has wanted to bless his people, but we are too afraid to ask for it. Hallelujah. If some things you don't have because you don't ask, amen, not everything is just going to come to you. I know there are some things that I, I did not get from my mother nor my father as a child if I didn't ask. Yes, they provided certain things, but there were certain things that I had to ask for. Mama, can I go here? Mama, can I do that? Daddy, can you give me this, please? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And because I opened up my mouth and I sought for it, I asked for it, then my parents gave it to me. And just as a reminder, Jesus say again, this is the word of God. Some people don't believe that you should teach this way. Come on. They want you to stay broke, busted, and disgusted. No, I'm not of that persuasion. I don't want to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Come on. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, Hallelujah for those that preach and teach the word. God say there is none that gave up their family, their houses for the kingdom of God's sake. He say in this lifetime shall he bless you and even in the lifetime to come. And so even as I walk out my calling, hallelujah, I should not live a, a broke life. I'm not saying I should be flying a, a $7 million jet. I'm not of that uh, persuasion. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If God want to do it for me, then he can do it for me. I'm not saying that I need to live in the biggest mansion. But what I am saying as a child of God, I don't need to be living under the bridge. I don't need to be wearing where my mortgage is coming from. I don't need to be driving a hoopty. Talking about I'm going to the hospital to pray for somebody. Talking about I'm going to go over here and speak. But when I get out my car, my car is blowing fumes. Come on, come on. But I'm in the church town telling people, God is a good God. Oh, he's a good God. I'm not telling you I need to drive a Bentley, but I'm telling you I need to drive something that I could depend on to get me backward and forward where God will have me to go. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so if you're looking for a preacher like that, that ain't me. I'm not, hey, when I wasn't serving God, he had me looking good. And now that I'm serving God, do you think that I should be walking around with holes in my clothes? I don't think so. I don't think so. 
Hallelujah. That's why I say, God, there got to be another measure. There got to be another dimension of your blessings. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, when you start out on a bike, your parents give you a tricycle and it have the little wheels on it to help hold you up. But when you learn how to ride that tricycle, they take the training wheels. Thank you. Coming back to me. They take the training wheels off and they give you uh, the regular bike. Come on. They give you the 10 speed without the training wheel. Why? Because you don't learn that. Amen. Hallelujah. So we shall go from glory to glory to glory. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm not saying that you're, you're going to have just be filthy rich. Glory be to God, but you shouldn't be li living in lack. You shouldn't be having crumbs. Come on. Hallelujah. And even if you don't have it, God will cause somebody to give it to you. And for those that God has placed upon your heart and to give and you still haven't gave, come on. Hallelujah. We can't trick God. That's, that's uh, the reason why sometimes our blessings are held up as well because we're so stingy. We don't want to release something out of our hand. Don't you know when you release that God will always cause the increase? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's just as much as I sown last week. Three different ministries. Don't you know it came right back to me? Right back to me. We can't beat God giving. Yes, I sow too. Yes, I sow. Come on. Yes, I sow to kingdom work. Yes, I sow to kingdom work. Come on. Hallelujah. In the minute I, 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 I did that. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody just cash out me right back what I released. The minute I sowed the next one, somebody just say, hey, you're going to be home? And just, it, it, come on, just like that. Don't be afraid to sow. Hallelujah. And so if this Thursday's midday breakthrough has been a blessing to you, go ahead and sow. Amen. Sow for where you want to grow. Amen. I'm not asking you a price. The Bible said when you give, don't give grudgingly, don't give sparingly, but give with a good heart. Amen. I know that it's been a lot of good teaching that is going on. Uh, over the airwaves. I know that there's been some prophetic words that has come to pass. You guys are not used to me acting like this. <laughs> come on. Hallelujah. But I feel late today. Hallelujah. As I decreed and declared the blessings of the Lord over your life. Hallelujah. I feel led for you to sow a seed. Amen. You're not sowing to buy God because you can't buy God. I can't buy God. But we're saying, God, I believe you for the very word that you said. Hallelujah. And God, I, it's just like I'm releasing my faith for the word that was imparted into me. So, again, uh, another one of the ways that you can help this ministry to help me. Amen. In this ministry. Uh, I know you have seen, taken notice that for the last month, probably month and a half, that I've listed the links for the books to make an impartation in your life. So I made it easy for you. All you have to do is click that link. It'll take you right to Amazon. If you don't want to purchase it from Amazon, you can reach out to me. And I just thank God for those that have been sewing. I thank God for those that purchased the book and for those that always say, oh, I'm a purchase. And maybe you have forgotten about it or maybe you're not computer suave, uh, smart like that. Maybe, maybe it's that. So I've made it easy for you by posting the link up there. Amen. And so, yes, I'm growing, breaking out of my shell because, you know, the Bible say when we preach and teach the word, we ought to live by the word. I'm so used to making my going to nine to five tell when God is doing a new thing in me to the way to, to live. It's kind of hard for me, but God has been dealing with me <laughs> little by little, little by little. So God bless you guys until we meet again. And I love you with the love of Christ. Thank you, Monique, for coming on. Thank you, darling, dear. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Ethelyn. Eth uh, maybe pronouncing your name right, Monique, Anthony. 
uh, and so many other people, Sister Ramans, Raming, Ramans, forgive me for butchering up these names, uh, Sabrina, my cousin, Maggie Monty, God bless you guys, thank you for coming on, uh, Pastor Berlisa knows, God bless you, uh, Pastor Sharon Sweeting, God bless you, Kiki, God bless you, my elementary childhood, junior high school friend, Lola, God bless you. Uh, Minister Tisdall, God bless you. Uh, well, God bless everybody. Uh, Mr. Broadway was in the house. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Share, 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 share. And if you want to send some birthday love, you can do that too. God bless you. 